Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar of buying a home in Hronian. Before we start, could you just please let me know if you can see me and hear me clearly? Uh, you can drop your uh, answer in the chat. Just want to make sure that you can see uh, the slideshow and you can hear me as well. You can drop your answers in the chat. Can anyone hear me? Perfect. Thank you very much for confirming that. Okay, my name is Katie. I've been uh, a buying manager with Expat Housing Network for about uh, one and a half years now. Uh, I originally come from Cyprus, but I have been an expat myself in different countries. Uh, the country that I am uh, right now, of course, is the Netherlands. Um, and yeah, I have to say, I do feel uh, like I found my uh, home away from home. Uh, enough about me, uh, just to get to know you a little bit better. I'm just gonna put a poll up. Um, I'm just wondering to hear about your situation a little bit. What is the reason that is uh, making you buy a house? Uh, so we'd be interested to hear that. And of course, moving forward to this presentation, uh, we're gonna talk more about uh, the process of that uh, and what kind of things you should consider uh, before uh, entering the process and of course, uh, within the process. Perfect. I see uh, some of you because you want to settle and some of you because the rents are too high. I completely understand that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, let's move forward. Now, a little bit about today. Uh, so we're going to talk about some market info. Of course, we're going to talk about some market drivers. Uh, what are the, the triggers that uh, drive the market? Uh, we're going to talk about savings that are related to the buying process, three tips on how to win the market, and of course, the timeline. So you're a little bit aware of the steps. Uh, greatness is achieved in the agency of others. With that being said, please let me introduce you to the rest of my team. Uh, so this is me, originally coming from Cyprus. We have uh, my amazing colleague Giovanna, uh, who comes from Brazil. We have Ludo, who comes from uh, the Netherlands himself. Uh, we have Rick and Ellen, who are also uh, from the Netherlands. And we have Rafaela as well, who comes from Brazil. Um, and just so you have an idea, if you do decide to work with Expat Housing Network, uh, then Rafaela would probably be your uh, person of contact. All these people will be uh, taking looks um, in your uh, files and documents and will be supporting the team in general. We work as a team, but you will have one um, person of contact just to keep the communication easier for you. Perfect. A little bit more about us. So we are not traditional real estate agents. What we mean by that is that uh, we don't only help uh, uh, with buying, we also help with renting, but we don't sell houses or we don't let uh, properties at the moment. Uh, we charge a fixed fee, so we don't have uh, any commission rates uh, compared to other real estate agents. Uh, we definitely know what it's like to settle in a new country. I just showed you that uh, a lot of my uh, team members are actually expats themselves. Um, and of course, what is the added value that we can give you? Uh, well, selling agents do take our offers a little bit more seriously. That's due to the uh, due diligence uh, that we did in the past, the way we work, and of course, the networks and connections that we have built. Uh, we can sometimes book viewings when it's no longer available. Sometimes agents do like to prioritize uh, buyers who are represented. In that way, they're ensuring that, um, yes, the person who's going to come uh, is actually a little bit more serious uh, 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 about the process since they're paying uh, someone to uh, be in charge of it. Um, so that can come in handy sometimes. Uh, we support you by reviewing the Dutch legal and property documents. We help you define the market value through market data, which is super important. Uh, we will inform you about the rules and regulations of the property. And of course, we'll make sure you don't make the same mistakes that we did uh, trying to buy our houses here and settle down. Um, so just before I move forward, I'd like to know where in the process are you guys? Uh, you can type this in the chat. It's not a poll, just type it in the chat. Are you like searching, viewing? Have you uh, submitted an offer? I, I hope not. Uh, and uh, Or are you just in the orientation um, space? The I see orientation here. Thanks, Pia, for your answer. Andres as well. 
Okay, perfect. So I'm assuming that most of you are in the orientation uh, phase. By the way, guys, if you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A. Uh, in that way, I'll be the only one um, uh, reading them and I'll be uh, sharing the answer at the end uh, for everyone uh, uh, to have an idea. So pop them in the Q&A. If you pop them in the chat, there's a big chance we'll miss them. Uh, so please, if you have any questions, just put them uh, in the Q&A and I'll make sure I'll go over it before uh, we close up for today. Perfect. Thank you for your answers. Uh, moving forward, uh, some market information. So of course, here you see uh, the general development of the, the average price in the Netherlands since 2005 up to 2022 quarter one, which is 426. So you see that uh, since 2025, there has been uh, uh, quite a steadily increased. Um, there was a little bit of a sharper increase in the last one to two years. Uh, COVID helped our market instead of uh, putting it down. Uh, so that's why you see that spiking a little bit higher. Do keep in mind, we are already in quarter three. So um, uh, the, the results of quarter, the data of uh, quarter two is about to get released uh, within the first few weeks uh, of this month. Uh, so soon we'll have more updated numbers for you as well. Um, some uh, chronic and specific numbers. So uh, in quarter one, 2022, houses that were sold for 710, Houses that were for sale, 314. The average price uh, of a buying a home in Groningen was 324. That was a 12.7% increase from last year, and it was a 1.2 increase since the last quarter. That's a good sign. So uh, Groningen is still moving forward. Uh, the average price per square meter, that's uh, 2,861 euros. You see that it's still an increase since last year and last quarter. And finally, the sales times are 29. That is 54% uh, percent since last year. Uh, so it is getting a little bit uh, slower um, in comparison to last year, but it is minus uh, almost 15% from last quarter, uh, which also suggests that um, the speed of buying a home and the whole process is getting quicker and quicker. So be prepared guys, because the process is quite quick um, and you wanna make sure you are aware of what you're getting into uh, so you can avoid surprises. Uh, so some market drivers, uh, what causes the market to increase? So of course, fiscal benefits. At the moment, we have the tax exemption uh, of the 2% transfer tax that applies to people who first have never bought a home in the Netherlands before or haven't used this rule before. Uh, second, they are younger than 35. 35 and above doesn't count. You need to be uh, younger than 35. Uh, and then the, ha the property that you buy is less than 400,000. Uh, if you fit those three requirements, uh, then you're uh, you're eligible to have the tax exemption, which is 2% of the price. If you're going for a resi residential mortgage um, uh, here in the Netherlands, the interest rebate, we still have the interest rebate going on, which means uh, that the interest on your mortgage is tax deductible, which is super nice. Uh, currently, there are no capital gains on the profits that you make if you sell your property. There might be some discussions of doing that later in the future, perhaps 2025 or 26. There is no concrete plan for it, but there have been uh, some discussions raised uh, about the possibility of that. So far, good, though, no capital gains. Uh, we have the tax-free parent donation, which allows a parent to gift 100000 um, uh, to uh, their child uh, with the use that they're intending to use to buy a property, and that is tax-free money. Next year, that amount will be uh, reduced to uh, 30000 uh, between yeah between thirty and forty thousand, and then by the year after that will also end. So if you're in that situation, make sure that you uh, uh, get some advice and consultation from um, uh, a tax consultant, so you'll be able to use that money as more uh, as effectively as possible. Another thing that uh, drives the uh, prices, of course, is low interest rates. Uh, last year, we had an average interest rate between 1.5 and 2, but we see uh, that this year that has been raised between 3.5 and 
already. However, that is still considered to be low. We are not sure of how things uh, will evolve in that case because it's, uh, there are a lot of factors influencing that. Uh, but at the moment, um, uh, we see that they're st starting to maybe stabilize a little bit. Uh, high rent, of course, uh, if someone needs to pay rent and then not own anything, of course, it will be better for them to um, uh, swap into a mortgage, which is perhaps a little bit less or equal to the rent that they pay. And then also every month, build some equity on the property. And of course, we have the never ending problem uh, in the Netherlands, the, last, the lack of supply. So this is one of the reasons that the Netherlands uh, has a very good real estate market is because the demand is so high, the supply is so low, which drives the prices uh, even uh, higher. There are a lot of plants uh, in place in many cities in the Netherlands uh, for new build projects and uh, uh, other kind of buildings to be turned um, into residential properties uh, in an aim to reduce uh, the lack of supply. Uh, but that, of course, is uh, you know not something that ha can happen from uh, one day to another. Uh, so we still have the issue of uh, supply at the moment. Some news related to Groningen and the Netherlands in general. So since March 22, you have uh, the Groningen municipality has introduced the self-occupancy application, uh, which means that if the property you're buying has a wealth value up to uh, 305,500 uh, euros, that means that it will include a permanent, a permanent self-occupancy clause. That means that you will not be able to rent the property. Uh, the reason that this happened is because the government are uh, the government is trying to remove the private investors from the lower range properties in order to offer the you know the normal average buyer a better opportunity to buy a property. Don't get me wrong, there will still be competition when you go out there and make offers, but at least you will not be uh, compare uh, competing to someone who has endless amounts of cash and is looking at this property as a business transaction instead of uh, a home. Uh, so that makes things better, but if you're intending to rent, uh, please make sure that you double check with the agent um, what kind of regulations exist because they can be different from property to property. Uh, moving to the next article, so uh, just to point out that in February 2022, there was still a 20% uh, increase in the house prices in the Netherlands, um, which indicates uh, that the prices uh, will continue to grow in 2022, or at least are continuing to grow. Uh, we're looking forward to receive the new uh, uh, data, so we'll be able to see uh, how a quarter two actually developed. Um, and then again, the interest rates are, are to rise. They have predicted in 2021 that there will be um, uh, uh, and increasing the interest rates, of course, based on everything that happened in the last two to three years. Uh, they have uh, suggested that uh, the inflation might be temporary, but because we do see that there are other um, 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 events around the world that affect that uh, directly, especially with, uh, with prices and inflation, then we see that maybe inflation uh, is a little bit um, uh, more longer than expected. So let's talk about savings. I'm very curious to know what do you think you'll need in savings before you start, as in like before you buy a house. Um, you can either put an amount, uh, you can type the answer in the chat, by the way. Uh, you can either put an amount uh, or if you want, you can just type uh, a percentage. Like what kind of savings do you think you will need? Uh, uh, for uh, buying a home here in the Netherlands. I'm really curious to hear that. You can write your uh, answers in the chat. Moving forward, I'll explain a little bit more about uh, savings. 100K, Alex, wow, if you have 100K in saving, that's really, really good. You're in a good position. Um, but of course, guys, keep in mind, I am not talking about um, um, uh, having money, money to have equity in the house. I am only talking about what kind of expenses do you think uh, you will you will have um, uh, during this process. Uh, no idea, hundred k. If if your bar is hundred k, I'm loving that. So then your expectations cannot be crushed. I love that. Perfect. We're gonna move forward, and I'm gonna explain this a little bit better. There we go. Okay. 
So as you see here, we have a table of costs. If you are eligible to pay the transfer tax, that will be 2% of the purchase price. So that depends uh, on the property, but this will be um, um, uh, exempted if you fit these requirements. Uh, you will need a notary uh, that will uh, take over the legal part of signing and transferring the property to you. He, if you're going for the mortgage, they will need to draw up a mortgage deed for you, and they will also need to, trans, uh, to uh, draw up a transfer um, uh, deed for you for the property. Your mortgage advisor could be anything between uh, 1,500 and uh, three and a half thousand. So let's say it is also tax deductible. Please keep in mind that anything that is related to the mortgage is also tax deductible. So the mortgage deed is uh, tax deductible. Uh, the, the transfer deed is not. Uh, the mortgage uh, broker is tax deductible, but you see here that the real estate agent is not. Uh, a typical real estate agent will charge uh, between one and 2% of the purchase price. Um, uh, we have a fixed fee, by the way, so again, nothing to worry about there. Um, regarding an appraisal, this will cost you between 650 and 800 euros. Uh, this really depends uh, on some qualities of the property and, of course, how big it is. A uh, technical inspector will cost you between, uh, well, an average of 430 euros, let's say. Uh, you will also need an interpreter to uh, translate the uh, verbally what the notary is saying to you at the day that you're signing the transfer deeds. Uh, this is usually an average of 350 euros, but it, it, the price can depend uh, based on what kind of language uh, you will need. Uh, you have the bank guarantee. This is um, um, the, the part of, so the bank will give you 100% of the value of the house. So you get 100% uh, of a mortgage. And then uh, you're all, always obligated to pay a 10% uh, deposit uh, to sort of like secure the deal once you sign the contract. Um, if you don't have the 10% in cash, what you can do is ask the bank to uh, make that guarantee for you. So they will transfer the 10% themselves, but they do charge um, uh, 250 euros for this or 1% uh, of what they are guaranteeing. That is for your mortgage advisor to specify. And of course, the national insurance, uh, this is an extra layer of insurance. It gives you a, a, a better interest rate as well. Um, if your uh, property is um, uh, uh, eligible for that, then automatically you will get it with the mortgage. Uh, so that is good to know. I would say if you are going to pay the transfer tax, then you should calculate between 5 and 6% um, of what uh, um, uh, of the purchase price as your expenses. And then if you're not paying the transfer tax, I'd say anything between two and 3%. If you go on our website, we have an online calculator there. Uh, you can put different examples in and then you see all these different calculations uh, and how much you uh, need it for each occasion. So please go ahead and use it. And if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to specify them. Great, moving forward, some tips for you to win in the current market. Of course, the most important thing uh, when looking at a house is the value. This is because the bank will give you 100% of the value of the house and the value of the house is not always the purchase price. In fact, in the Netherlands, uh, uh, the market value is almost never the purchase price. Uh, you will find yourself that the purchase price will be higher than the market value. Um, and even uh, supposedly, let's say you can borrow a million from the bank, um, uh, it doesn't mean that the bank will finance uh, the full amount of the purchase price. They will only finance how much uh, uh, the property is valued. Let me explain. So here you see this house is property uh, asked at 395. This does not reflect the, uh, the, ask, the market value. The asking price is always placed between 10 and 15%. Well, not always. It is not a golden rule, but like 90% of the times, the asking price is between 10 and 15% below the market value. And what happens usually is that you first need to match up the market value. And then based on the neighborhood data and competition, you need to add something on top of that if you want to have a real chance at getting an offer accepted um, uh, 
uh, and wanting to be competitive. It doesn't apply for every house. Like for example, if you're buying a house that needs a full renovation, then obviously uh, uh, it doesn't make sense to offer a lot more than the value. But do keep in mind that if there are other people looking at that, you can never control what they wanna offer. So overbidding is a part of being competitive. Um, okay, so this uh, price, asking price is at 395. So let's say that the market value, we have researched the property and we have seen that the market value is 415. Now the purchase price is 435. That's how much it ends up selling for. Now we see that the difference between the asking price and the purchase price is 40K, that's a 10%. But the price between the value, the difference between the value and the purchase price is 4.8%. That's 20K. So in actuality, uh, you have not uh, overbid it 10% um, uh, to get the property. You have only overbid it 4.8%, which is significantly lower, of course. Um, and to be honest, that, that is not bad at all, um, um, especially for good houses. Now, let's say that it's the same house we're talking about, but this time they decided to put the asking price at 375. Uh, the market value remains the same. We're talking about the same property. Therefore, the purchase price is also the same. You see, there's no regulation for the asking price. The agents can place that wherever they want. Now, we see that the difference between the price of the asking and the purchase price is now 60K, that's 16%. However, the difference between the value and the purchase price remains at 20K. So you see here that a lot of people might, you might hear out there that, yeah, you need to bid 10% or 15 or 20%. There is sort of like a, um, um, a trend around that, but that, that does not always apply. And it's always super important to look at the market value of the property, because that is what is going to help you understand, okay, how much can I borrow from the bank? How much do I want to offer? And can I cover the difference between the asking price, um, uh, between the purchase price and the value price? Okay. If you have any questions about this, please just pop them in the q and I'll be happy to answer them. Now, moving forward, what makes a winning offer? Offering a good price is very nice, but it's not always the highest price. There's a lot of conditions that you can add in your offer that can make the, the process easier uh, for the seller as well. Therefore, they might prefer you. So offer security to the seller, right? So um, if they if, if, if they're uh, um, uh, telling you that, for example, uh, okay, we are uh, we can move out in September, um, but we don't know yet because we still need to wait our new build property to be finished. You know, don't make them feel like, okay, no, you will not have another day or something like that. You can always give them the space and say, okay, let's have an agreement. Uh, two weeks before this provisional transfer date, uh, we need to confirm a final date, for example. So this also gives them the feeling of security as well. Uh, offer the least amount of hassle. You know, if they're selling their property because uh, they want to move out uh, of the country and they want to sell the furniture with it as well, I mean, you're not obligated to take any kind of furniture. But if it's really your dream house, then it's not worth losing it because you don't, you're not willing to buy the furniture as well. It will be better to buy the furniture and maybe sell it on yourself. It will be a little bit of, of a hassle for you um, uh, in some cases if you don't want the furniture. Uh, but to be honest, it is worth it because it is your dream house. Uh, and offer a personal touch. Always uh, attach uh, a little paragraph about you, maybe a little profile, a picture uh, to let the agent know, uh, sorry, the seller know um, who you are uh, and just a little bit of your background. It's always good for the agent to be able to see your picture as well because then they'll remember you from the viewing and they'll be able to talk to their client uh, uh, more about you. Due diligence. So um, we have two experts that need to come in the process at some point. Uh, the one is a technical inspector. This is the person who will come and visually um, um, ex um, inspect the property to let you know whether uh, uh, any maintenance is needed or not. 
uh, please keep in mind these reports will always come up with maintenance fees. It's, it is their job to be as detailed as possible, uh, but that doesn't mean that um, um, uh, there are costs that you need to uh, occur now or uh, that it's something urgent. Uh, with that being said, we also have the appraiser. This is the person who will come um, and evaluate the property uh, so you can get um, uh, a mortgage at the end. So I'm curious to know when do you think these people come uh, in the process? Do you think they come before the offer is accepted or after the offer is accepted? You can just write your answers in the chat. I'm just very curious to see um, um, uh, what your thoughts are on this. Um, maybe some of you have some experience in buying a home in another country. So um, uh, I'm also curious to see whether that uh, is different here uh, than where, in, uh, where you did it. Uh, so when do you think they come, before or after? I see Andres is my uh, committed student here. I'm gonna go ahead. Thank you, Andres, for your answer. You are correct. It is after. Uh, quite frankly, it will be wait right here. So once the offer is accepted, this is the first thing we do to book the technical inspector and to book the appraiser. It is super important that those two people come in uh, so they can do their reports um, and then we can move forward with uh, anything that we do. The mortgage advisor will need the, uh, um, the appraiser report. So it is super important that we have that quite soon. So thank you, Anders, for your answer. As you see here, uh, once your offer is accepted, you have between one and a half weeks to uh, sign the purchase contract. Uh, in that time, uh, we book the experts and then that is when they come uh, uh, to generate their reports. And then once you sign the contract, you see you have a three days cooling off period as a buyer, uh, which means that you can still pull out of the offer if you need to. Let me talk a little bit more about the timeline here. So. Uh, of course, there's a part where you need to search for properties. Once you find a property that you're interested in, uh, you need to submit an offer. Uh, just to give you some context before you submit an offer, if you do work with us, what we do for you is prepare two main research. One is called the property document review. This is um, a, a, a review of all the legal documents that are attached to the property. And the second one is called the price research, uh, which we analyze the market and we help you understand um, uh, what the market value is. We will always provide you with a range, uh, but of course the specific amount will come um, once the appraiser visits the property. Uh, so the offer is accepted, then right after we book the experts, um, soon after you sign the contract and your mortgage application starts, in the same time, your cooling off period ends three days later after you sign the contract. Uh, and then we usually wait two to four weeks for a mortgage to get approved. Um, and then once um, your mortgage gets approved, you get a statement of completion. This is an email from the notary that states all the costs that you need to pay. Do keep in mind, by the way, that the only two people that you need to pay beforehand is the appraiser and the technical inspector. And of course, any deposit that uh, the professionals you chose uh, commit you to. But the rest of the invoices and anything else you pay at the very last day where you go to become the owner. And that can be two weeks later, that can be one, one month later. I even had it with a client that that was a year later. Um, so good for you to know, just keep that in mind that most of the cost will be paid uh, at the last day when you're becoming the owner. Um, and after that, of course, you have the last day before you go at the notary to sign all the documents and get your keys handed over. You go at the property to uh, for a last round of checks, you know, just to make sure they didn't break anything when they were moving out or, uh, you know, if you had any agreements, if they're uh, uh, done, um, you know, just a last round of checks. And then after that, you are actually the legal owner of the property and you can do um, uh, whatever you want with it. So that it is about the process. Uh, the way we work is in um, two ways. Uh, here you see the new build package, but this is only uh, specific to uh, new build properties that are in development or haven't, uh, 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 haven't been started yet. Uh, it is a different process. If you'd like to learn more about it, please just go ahead on our website 
uh, and select to have an intake with us or a sign up for our free webinar about this. Uh, but the most important thing to know about the new build package is that uh, first, you will need to pay both rent and mortgage until the time you're able to move out uh, when the property is built. And secondly, uh, the, the new build properties don't come with uh, uh, fully finished parts. Uh, so sometimes the kitchen is missing, sometimes the bathroom is missing, sometimes the floor is missing. So there's always something that's not completed. You can add that on your renovate on your uh, mortgage cost, uh, but just important for you to know. Uh, for the existing builds, we have two ways of working. It's the smart package. This is a little bit of an online package. So we do everything from you from beginning to end. Um, and this is at two and a half thousand euros. Um, and the complete package is, of course, a full on package. The difference is that we're physically there. So we attend viewings with you. We book the viewings with you. Uh, we attend the inspector and the notary. And of course, we are there with you uh, on your last inspection. Uh, this is, of course, a bigger package. The most important thing to know, guys, is that we only ask you to pay a 10%. Um, uh, thanks, Alex. You have to leave. Uh, but thank you so much for coming um, to continue. The most important thing is that we only charge a 10% um, uh, uh, 10 percent of the package that you choose. And then we have a no cure, no pay system, which means that, you know, if for any reason you don't end up securing a home with us, you know, maybe you decide to change uh, uh, your country or uh, you decide to change your location or I don't know something, then it, of course, that means that you're not obligated to fully pay the amount. Um, uh, that is super important uh, for us because we don't have a commission fee, but we also don't want to make you feel like, oh, because we're not uh, commission based, that means we don't care, you know, no, we really care and we're really committed to uh, finding, uh, securing a home for you. Uh, and then in case that is not possible, then of course we don't go forward with the full invoice. If we have done a significant amount of work, then of course we'll request a certain percentage, uh, but not the full amount. Um, time for questions. I'm not sure. Do you guys have any questions? You can drop them in the q and A. I I don't have any questions so far. I see here. If the q and A is not convenient for you, you can also ask that in the chat since I can see it now. Uh, just going to wait for a few seconds, but I don't have any questions. So I'm glad for that. I'm thinking that uh, I have explained everything very well. Uh, can my partner translate for me at the notary? Uh, if she is um, um, uh, certified and a sworn translator based on the uh, Dutch legislation, then she'll be able to do that. It doesn't matter if she's, uh, if she's related to you or not. Uh, one question from Pia. Yeah, please go ahead. I'm looking forward for this all the time. Take your time to tie about just wait. Don't worry about that. Do keep in mind that this uh, um, webinar will be sent to you. It is recorded. You will have the slides. Uh, and you will also have a link there to book intakes with us uh, if you, by any chance, want to uh, know a little bit more. Um, so a question from Mark, where to find the market price of the property? OK, there are different um, soft um, uh, platforms that you use. One is, let me type it down. Cadastro.nl and WalterLiving.nl. But please keep in mind that these are softwares, right? So they will collect all the, um, the information of the recent sales of the property. There are some criteria that they avoid, you know, uh, not to compare a very small property to a very big one. Uh, but it is still a software and not everything that they choose to compare uh, is uh, correct. So do keep this in mind that if you do decide to request an evaluation report from there, it's a software that is doing that, not a person. So it's automatic. Um, and it could be that it's also not very accurate. Um, it would be best that you advise, uh, you get some advice from the from an agent or from an appraiser if you want to be a little bit more um, accurate there. 
so PM moving forward, uh, do most people start this process while in the country of origin or should be in the Netherlands already? Um, that really depends. We have clients in both ways. And I can guarantee you that if you started when you're in the country, it will just make things easier for you. Uh, the reason is that if you're outside of the country, uh, most of the times agents will not take um, 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 uh, offer seriously from you since you haven't viewed the house yourself. Uh, very rarely you will find agents that will accept that. Uh, and yeah, buying a home is not very simple. So it is a, a big purchase. So they do want uh, at least one person to be there. So if it's not you, it should be at least a friend uh, or, a, or a family member. Um, so yeah, most of the people start the process where in, they're already in the country. Uh, and of course, if you want to get a mortgage, you need to be working in the country as well. Uh, next question, do your fees can be covered by the mortgage? Uh, no, the mortgage will only cover 100% of the value of the house and nothing else. Uh, the only things that can be covered with the mortgage uh, is also when you add some renovation costs, but that can have, a, can have an impact on your limit. So please make sure you um, um, uh, get advice from a mortgage advisor. By the way, if you do need to get uh, some contacts with mortgage advisors, I advise you first to talk with your bank. If you're a client there, they might have something interesting to offer, uh, but they're limited to their own products. So that is not always ideal. And secondly, I can also send you some mortgage advisor recommendations that are around the front end area and can give you a little bit more information on that. You're not obligated to move forward with them or anything. You can just have a chat um, and see where it goes. So if you are interested, send me your email um, and I will, uh, that, uh, we will make sure we send you some mortgage advisor recommendations. Um, you can select that your email only comes to me, so not other people in the chat see it. So if you want some recommendations, just let me know. Okay, uh, moving forward. Um, PIC, I see I'm Dutch myself, so my family could do a viewing, then that would make things better for you. Um, maybe it would be better to have an intake chat to discuss your, your specific situation a little bit more, and then we can give you better advice on when to start the process. Um, Jelena is still not clear on how much savings I need to have start the whole process. Okay, so the savings you will need, if you need to pay the 2% transfer tax, that will be... Uh, you will need around 5 to 6% of the purchase price of your home. And if you're not paying the transfer tax, then you will need around 2% of the purchase price of your home. I think it's better for you to um, uh, maybe book an intake with us so we can talk a little bit more specific, uh, uh, specifically there about the savings. I'm not sure if you have um, any questions that are related only to your uh, situation. Pia sounds good. Uh, I don't have any more questions, guys. So I'm assuming uh, that there are not any more coming. I am very, very happy that you all attend today. Thank you very much for your questions. Again, you will receive an email if there's anything that you need, if there's any questions that you have or anything, any kind of support, just reply to that email and then uh, um, our agents will get back to you and answer those questions. I will answer this uh, last question uh, from Andres, roughly how long does it uh, take for the whole process? Okay, that's an interesting one. Um, we say that it takes an average between three to nine months, but to be completely honest and transparent, I had clients who were done in one month and I had clients who were done in a year. So there are a few things that depend. So how long it will take for an offer to get accepted, that depends on how willing you are to adapt on the market, um, 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 and yeah, how actively you're viewing. Just so you have an idea, we have uh, two to three offers accepted every five um, as an average. So if you're actively looking at making offers, it shouldn't take you a long time. But from the moment that an offer gets accepted until the time uh, uh, that the property is transferred to you, that depends. Okay, first, when is the transfer date? Assuming that the transfer date is as soon as possible, because that is the standard timing anyway. Uh, if not, it will be specified. From the time that the offer gets accepted, it will take six to eight weeks for the property to be completely transferred to you. 
Uh, and then keeping, if you have a mortgage, huh? if you are not involved in a mortgage, the process can be slower, uh, assuming that the owner can also, uh, sorry, faster, I meant, uh, assuming that the owner, of course, can move out faster as well. So it depends. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to talk more about it, let's just have a chat together uh, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, again, you'll receive everything. Any questions you have, just reply. And thank you everyone for being here uh, tonight. It was lovely to talk to you and lovely to uh, go over your questions. For now, have a lovely evening and I hope to see you soon. Bye everyone.